If, if you have a 2K test coming up or you wanna do your first one or it's your 30th, I don't, however many, if you have a 2K test coming up, are you thinking about the way that you're going to warm up? Because if you're not, you could be setting yourself up for a massive, ma just horrific 2K disaster. Or, or done right, you could potentially see an incredible victory. And a huge new PR. Which do you want? Today, we're gonna take you through the best warm up for a 2K that you can ever, but you could possibly imagine. Just ever. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Shane Farmer. This is Dark Horse Rowing, where we build better humans through rowing so that you can build the life that you would like to live. If you are looking for the absolute best 2K warm up that you could implement in your training plan before you get your 2K test on, listen up, pay attention, because this is the video for you. The 2K test is up there with the physical human performance, up in the ranks of like, impressively watching somebody snatch and clean and jerk at the Olympics, or running a mile sub five, or juggling chainsaws. It's just an incredible thing that the human body can do, and if you're considering taking it on yourself, it's a really wicked test of fitness and mental fortitude. Pre-1894, rowing racing distances varied wildly, and it really was predicated upon the distance given at any city. So you may have a river that had 1,800 meters, or you had a lake that had 5,000 meters, and that really determined the distance of the race, and there was no uniform distance, 2,000 meters was not a, a designated thing. Then in 1894, when FISA, Fédération Internationale des Sociétés, Daviron, the, the governing body of world rowing, which of course is a French governing body, decided to step in and start trying to figure out what is the right distance for us. Eventually they landed on 2,000 meters, mostly because of a particular race in Macon, France, which just happened to have a 2,000 meter course. And that kind of started the trend towards using 2,000 meters as a uniform distance. Now after that, it started to get more and more involved. However, you still saw like collegiate racing in the United States, also dependent upon the distance that they had. And basically after 1948, we saw all Olympic racing distances adopt 2000 meters. And that continued with collegiate distances starting to vary a little bit, but almost globally you saw 2000 meters kind of becoming the predominant racing distance. Then in like the eighties when Crash Bees, which is the indoor, probably the longest running indoor rowing race around, they very in distance as well. And then in the mid 90s, they adopted 2000 meters as their given distance. And after that, it was pretty much over. There was really no more decision. 2000 meters became the testing distance both on the water and on the machine. So taking that history, it's kind of cool to understand why you're gonna be doing the 2000 meter test. Now, let's get into the actual warm up piece of it. It's really critical and almost impossible to overstate how important a good warm up can be for a 2K test. You have to have your body primed to get the most out of it. There's a reason that every professional athlete spends a ton of time warming up for the event. Nobody just shows up and competes. People take practice rep after practice rep after practice rep, and this warm up is gonna get you ready to go. First up in the warm up is getting your body stretched and mobilized and ready for the movement that is to come. With that being said, the things that you're looking for are your hamstrings and your lower back, your shoulders, making sure they are primed and ready to go. That will often kind of wrap in a little bit of midline, turning that on. You also wanna make sure that you have your ankles mobilized, ready to go, because you do have some flexion requirements out of the ankles. And your hips, it's really critical that the hips are ready to go so that they can easily hinge back and forth. So your legs, your shoulders, your hips, and your ankles, weird all of your major joints. So for the hamstrings and lower back, we're looking at a seated forward fold. That's a very easy one to start with. In the seated forward fold, it's just sitting on the floor in a draped over position, legs straight out in front of you, allowing that hamstring and lower back to release a little bit as you drape into a position. Then to get a little bit more active with it, you're gonna go into banded hip distraction. A banded hip distraction requires a little bit of equipment, which is just a band pretty much of any kind and an anchored surface. From there, you're gonna wrap that band around one leg and draw the band high up into the hip. You'll then face away from the surface that that band is anchored to. You're gonna put all your weight into the leg that has the band on it. You'll then fold in half, bringing your hands to the floor, put your weight into that leg, and the other leg is just there to give you some balance, not to actually put any weight in that foot. You'll bend the knee, 
so that you're just kind of easily resting in the leg. Then you will straighten the knee, pushing your hips to the ceiling. Then try and bring your nose to your knee, keeping your hands on the ground. You'll repeat that about 15 times on each side. Next for the shoulders, a good way to start is with banded distraction here as well. So you can say, take that same band, but anchor it to a high point, And then you're just gonna give some nice, good distraction to the joint. That being, you tension the band and relax the shoulder and allow the band to kind of pull the shoulder out in a, a very gentle movement. So you just relax everything. And then just take some kind of, some like rolling movement through the body and allow the shoulder to find some ranges of motion with that distraction happening at the same time. Next, you're gonna go into some scat push-ups. This is a bit of the activation piece. So in a push-up position, you're gonna brace through the midline, keep the elbows straight, hands underneath the shoulders, and then you're just gonna let your shoulder blades come together and then press the shoulder blades back apart without pressing through the elbow or doing a push-up. It's just the shoulders that are gonna move here. So you'll find it's a shorter range of motion than normal. And finally, I like this exercise, it's called wall climbs. You're basically just standing, hands on a wall, sl feet slightly away so that you're at a bit of a forward angle. And then with the hands, you're just going to palm by palm, walk your way up the wall, keeping the hands together, and you're gonna move them about one hand width down each time as you walk up and down the wall. Do that five times, and you can do maybe two sets of that, so you get 10 total reps up and down the wall. Next, let's get your hips ready to move. With the hips, a good way to start, I'm a big fan of dragon pose. This is essentially a lunge on the floor where you just hang into that back leg and you feel a really good stretch on the hip flexor of the rear leg. You can, and you can even stabilize yourself on another surface. From there, a reverse lunge with a twist. Here's a bit more activation with some stretching as well. So you'll take a reverse, you'll step into a reverse lunge, keeping the back knee off the floor, and then you'll twist up and over the front knee to get another stretch through that midline, as well as into that hip flexor again. And finally, a squat matrix. I'm just a big fan of this one. Open up the hips, give yourself some clearance in the hips so that you get comfortable in a squat position, which you're gonna be doing a lot of when you're on the row, and making sure that those hips open up, give you some movement and clearance so that when you get into the row, the legs are moving pretty freely. And finally, the ankles opened up. A good way to start, basic kneeling position, kind of like a yoga pose. You're gonna just kneel onto your feet and ankles. If you can't, feel free to place a pillow under your butt and stack up those pillows as necessary to make it possible. And that's gonna give you some plantar flexion of the ankle, which is just a nice, gentle, passive flexion. From there, move into banded ankle distraction. You're noticing this distraction theme coming up quite a bit. So band around the ankle, anchor the foot, and then you're just gonna guide that knee through range of motion that, that allows the ankle to have a little bit of dissociation from its normal kind of tight position, and you're just gonna give it some gentle range of motion. Follow that with a calf raise, and then when you come down, take the toes up into a heel lift, and this is just a nice eccentric concentric movement that you're going to help to warm up the calf, the Achilles, and all the muscles in the foot as well. Getting that ankle just ready to go. Okay, it's time to actually move on to the machine, the thing you're gonna use for the test, and start to get your body hot and sweaty. You're not trying to get any level of fatigue here. What you're trying to get is breathing heavy, heart rate elevated, body warm, and a rolling sweat going, but you don't want to experience a level of fatigue where you start to suck off of the energy that you need to get into that test. My favorite way to kick this off is with the 10 minute build. Of course, if you've watched our videos before, you know I recommend this one because I just, I love it for the sake that I love it. It starts easy and ramps up in intensity, but the damper is all the way down at a one. So trust me, if you do this at a damper one, you follow along with me in the video, it's a 16 up to a 30 damper one. And by the time you're done, yeah, you're breathing heavy, you're hot, you're sweaty, but you are not fatigued. So let's start there. Use that for your first 10 minutes. And here comes the final piece of the warm up. This is where you actually feel your pacing for the day. This is six minutes, so you're gonna set six minutes on your machine. From there, it's just an easy paddle, meaning like basically no pressure, you're just focusing on mechanics, again, because you mobilized and activated, take the time to feel the way your body is moving on the machine, you'll be hot and sweaty now from the 10 minute build. Then as you lead into it, every two minutes, you are going to take a power 20. A power 20 is just 20 hard strokes, and those 20 hard strokes should be building to your goal pace. So if your goal pace is a 150 split, 
for the 2000 meters, 150 pace. Let's say that your first 20 power 20, you're gonna maybe row that pace plus four seconds, so a 154. The next 20, you're gonna go plus two seconds, so 152. And the final 20, you'll hit that 150 pacing that you're expecting out of yourself for the day. When you get done, you will have felt exactly what you're supposed to do right before you take your final break and get ready to hit the test. Okay, you've got yourself warmed up. It is This part is really critical, actually. Do not take too much time away from the machine and away from your warm up. You just spent a healthy amount of time getting warm and ready to go. Do not step away for more than five minutes and go do other things. You wanna take that heat that you've built up, you wanna take that feeling you've built up and apply it to your 2K test. So no more than five minutes off the machine, then come back, get your mind right and get ready to go. Yeah, what, what are you still? This is the, now put the 2000 meters on the screen, go do the thing. This is, and if it's not that time, then bookmark this video. Make sure that you have subscribed to our channel and bookmark this video so that when it's time for the test, pull this back up, use it, walk through it, get yourself hot and ready. And then when you get back to this point, when I'm like, you're gonna do the thing, to go do the thing. Hit the 2K test. You're gonna do great. Well, if you've walked your way through this warm up and you feel like you want to follow along with me through a 2K, check out this playlist of videos where I've rode a 2K at different paces so you can have a guide to follow along with. And don't forget to subscribe so that you can get alerted whenever we come out with a new video.